He's not wrong, is he? Uh, soap opera storylines. Uh, there's all sorts of things going on back home which are actually even more terrifying than all those snakes in the jungle. Uh, I've got columnist at the Daily Mail, Dan Hodges. Welcome, Dan. Good to see you on the... Uh, I think you've been on for the first time, the newly improved... Um, Independent Republic of Mike Graham on at night time. Oh, so what, a lovely looking, what a lovely looking studio it is. <laughs> well, you'd have to come in. You'd have to come in one night before, before Christmas. But, I mean, Nigel Farage, he's not wrong about any of that, is he? We need somebody who's going to lead this country. I mean, look at what's going on today down in Westminster. I mean, Rishi Sunak must have been grateful that he was sitting in the COVID inquiry, not having to sort of answer phone calls and door knocks every five minutes from members of his own party um, who don't like what he's doing. Yeah, I mean, I thought, uh, I mean, I thought, I thought Rishi Sunak actually enjoyed his time at his time at the COVID inquiry compared to, as you say, what's going on elsewhere. But that's, yeah. that's not a very high bar. I mean, I thought it was interesting uh, <laughs> that, as we saw there, that Nigel Farage has uh, has ruled out uh, working with uh, Rishi Sunak, but right. hasn't specifically worked ruled out working with anyone else. I right. thought, you know, if if we were talking in football terms that I, th I thought there maybe was an element of a come and get me plea there yes. with that uh, <laughs> with, with, with that with that it with that intervention uh but no i mean you're absolutely right i mean obviously he and uh reform it's it's an open secret he's going to come back and start um sort of pick up the reform uh the reform banner um and and the two of them have had more you know free publicity over the last how long has he been out there about a month Something like than that. they could have uh, they could have uh, could have dreamed of and 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 it has had a a difference you can see reform are now starting to increase their support in the polls and frankly that is absolutely terrifying tory mp's yeah because the only outcome for that really must be the loss of tory seats because you don't see reform winning a lot under this current system that we've got but they could sort of stymie the tories from getting in well, that's absolutely right. Obviously, it's the situation we saw just in the run up to the last election. At that point, Nigel Farage was persuaded to effectively sort of stand down mm. in, a, in, in those seats where it looked like they could, he could potentially have cost Boris the election and let Jeremy Corbyn in. But the, the problem for the Tories is that is just not going to happen this time. I mean, I was speaking to uh, senior officials from from reform last week and they were very very explicit they were saying we are going to kill the tory party we are going to take them out and take them out for good i mean somebody said to me we we're seeing the last days of the last majority tory administration of our lifetimes and that is the strategy mm. so unless they can do something to as it were you know let's let's be blunt about it buy off nigel or buy off reform or do some sort of deal with reform or do some sort of pact, then they are in a very, very perilous political state because they're in a bad enough they're in a bad enough state anyway before Nigel Farage entered the jungle and reform started to to, to pick up. The idea that they would now start sort of taking even more votes, um, certainly from the right of their constituency, that's something that is frankly terrifying to MPs. Yeah. No, indeed. And do you think that he has kind of broadened his appeal by going on this show? Because a lot of, you know, punditry was uh, said around all of this stuff going on that, you know, Nigel Farage actually, um, and I know him to be a decent guy, uh, and pe people will see that he's a decent guy, and that will influence their uh, possibility of voting for him and voting for his party. Well, yes. I mean, the, the, the answer is yes. I mean, you've only got to look at the fact that he, you know, he came th third in... You know what is you know effectively the biggest public opinion poll um that's that we that we've got going i mean when he went in obviously a lot of people were trying to rubbish him belittle him you know say it would, it would all turn into a disaster for him obviously the opposite has been true and it's you know it's given him uh given him and and reform of a very major boost and i think the thing is now reform have basically cut through they're, they're basically they're regularly now breaking double digit figures yeah. in the polls. They're regularly ahead of the ahead of the Lib Dems. You can't really when 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 this happens, it's very hard to get the genie back into the bottle. And I, I, I and, and, and particularly for Rishi Sunak. Now, it may well be, and we've seen it before, that come come polling day, uh, a number of people may draw back. But certainly for the next few months, re reform are going to be in the in the ascendancy. That obviously in the short term has has serious implications for Rishi Sunak and his premiership. It also actually has serious implications for 
the timing of the next general election because I, I've seen a number of commentators saying, well, it's it's more likely now Rishi Sunak or, and or the Tories will, another Tory leader will wait, try and play it long, wait till October. But they can't afford to do that if reform are picking up votes week after week, month after month. And the other thing they, it seems to me at the moment they can't afford would be to have a, a have a local election campaign next next May right. in which, you know, reform sweep the country as we've seen them do in, 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 in the run-up to previous elections and obviously UKIP in terms of European elections. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. I mean, it's the, this week is, I think, the four-year anniversary, isn't it, of the 2019 election. I still remember that very clearly. Nobody really quite believed that the, uh, uh, the majority of the Tories ended up with would, would happen. I don't think there was any pundit who was not very, quite surprised by that because Jeremy Corbyn looked like he was going to do quite well at one point in the evening before the polls closed. Um, didn't turn out that way. No, I mean, and I was, I was one of those pundits. I mean, I remember being speaking to a very, you know, well, a, a number of senior Tory cabinet ministers at the point that campaign started who said there's no way we can get a majority and there's no way we can secure a majority. Yeah. Now, obviously, part of that was obviously, the, the, as it were, you know, Nigel Farage stepping back from the brink. Obviously, the other thing was, was, was Boris and the mm. effectiveness of Boris on the campaign trail, which is why... Obviously, we in the Mail on Sunday were reporting this weekend why Tory MPs, incredible, yeah. though it may sound and crazy though it may sound, why why a small but significant number of Tory MPs are now starting to talk about is there any way, is there any route that we can get we can get Boris back as leader? And is there? Well, they they seem to think to sort of sort of allies of Boris Johnson have, have effectively put forward two 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 scenarios. One is the high risk strategy: you parachute him into a by election, see if he can get back that way. But it would have to be such a rock solid Tory seat because, as we've seen, they're not holding by elections where they've got majorities of twenty thousand plus. Mm. The other, even more incredible theory, is that basically. Rishi Sunak is deposed. A Boris ally then takes over as interim prime prime minister. Yeah. But as prime minister only, Boris Johnson takes over as Tory party leader. And the Tory, my understanding is, the Tory party rules don't stipulate the leader has to be a member of parliament. He takes over as leader, runs for a seat in that general election as the sort of the the the, the, the figurehead right. prime minister, if you like. And that's how they get him back in. Now, again, as I say, it, it sounds fantastical, but they are basically clutching at straws. Yeah, well, that's a proper Trojan horse, that one. I mean, I've also heard one that involves Cameron suddenly being given a sort of, you talk about football analogy, he's going to caretake a, a Prime Minister job uh, to get through the next tournament. <laughs> well, yeah, but the trouble with that theory, though, is obviously David Cameron has the same problem that Boris Johnson has. You couldn't have a Prime Minister... In the Lords, it, it, you, the Prime Minister would have to be a member of uh, uh, of Parliament, and David Cameron would say, face the same question: mm. How does David Cameron get back into Parliament? How does David Cameron win a by-election when, as I said, just about every by-election the Tories um, contest at the moment, they're getting absolutely hammered. Mm. Absolutely right. Well, it's going to be a fascinating year by the looks of things. Not so great probably for the Tories, but uh, next time we'll get you on, we'll talk about Keir Starmer and Labour because uh, some interesting stuff there as well. Dan Hodges, Mail on Sunday. Thank you very much indeed. Uh,